Today my guest is Kevin Ashley. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you, David. What do you do? Uh, I do coding, you know, most Me of the too. time. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And you've been coding this week here at Sync Week. Uh, you, you were just next to me, David. something cool. I know. I couldn't help but notice that you were writing code. <laughs> uh, tell me about the project we've been working on. Well, the project is actually very interesting. So we, we're doing a project for uh, a basketball team, uh, Seattle Storm. Uh -huh. That's and, a WNBA uh, team. It's a WNBA team, yes. And um, they are doing uh, camps for kids. So essentially, uh, the kids come to the camps uh, and the athletes from the team uh, play with the kids, teach them uh, their skills, and that's that's where we come in with technology. Oh, excellent. They've probably been running these camps for years, I imagine. The team's been around a while. What are we adding? Right. So we add in technology. So our, our goal is to uh, to help them uh, make make uh, make camps uh, more more interesting for the kids, uh, more informative. Maybe add a little bit more uh, technology there, so the kids can actually understand the, uh, understand the physics behind behind basketball. Interesting. Good. Give me an example. Well, one of the examples is, uh, for example, we, we're looking at sort of uh, 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 analytics behind dribbles, uh, how they uh, how they play with the ball, how they what they can improve uh, in the game. Uh, by uh, playing uh, or uh, performance skills uh, correctly. Uh, how are we doing that? So uh, we, we were looking at uh, movement analysis for basketball and mm. uh, specifically uh, the analysis for the simplest thing you can, you can imagine, right, uh, which is the dribble. Uh, so there are s several drills that uh, we're looking at and, uh, for instance, uh, when you dribble the ball, right, you can do it uh, with both hands. You can do crossovers. Mm -hmm. You can you can uh, you can sort of uh, have a high pace of dribbles. You can uh, have a lot of power when you dribble. So that's what we're trying to. That's the uh, sort of the kind of information we're trying to collect and uh, give to the coaches so that they can teach the kids. Okay, and you're using this this wristband to detect right. how, how hard you're dribbling and how often you're dribbling, correct? Well, that's, that's correct, yeah. So, so David, as, as you know, the, the number of sensors in our world uh, increases uh, almost exponentially. Right. And uh, so we see so many, t uh, so many sports and uh, uh, human activities that uh, begin using sensors. Uh, and so uh, we uh, we placed uh, we used a very simple sensor, uh, mm -hmm. which is an IMU, uh, that kids can uh, you know relatively quick, quickly put uh, put on uh, and uh, just start literally uh, playing with with any kind of ball, uh, oh. any inexpensive ball. So every time you you bounce that ball, this this orange wristband or the orange disc on the wristband, yep. it detects that. And then what does it do with that information? Right. So uh, it detects. Uh, uh, a lot of information about the movement at the rate of about 100 hertz. Uh, so uh, that's that's a pretty high rate for uh, you know moving your wrist. Okay. And then uh, we're looking at um, uh, g forces, so sort of the acceleration uh, as a 3D vector hmm. uh, of how the force is being applied to the ball, right? And then we're looking, of course, at uh, angular velocity, so things that uh, basically tell us how much the hand is rotating and how much the wrist is rotating. So that's actually surprisingly uh, uh, a huge amount of informa information for us to tell what is happening uh, at, uh, at, at, uh, with the ball uh, when the ball leaves the hand. All right, and then you're, it's not staying on the wristband device. It's going somewhere else, right? Correct. So the wristband device uh, is using what we call uh, machine learning on the chip. So essentially, we trained a machine learning model. We trained an, uh, an AI model uh, with uh, a lot of raw data. Uh, and um, and then we deployed um, a small version of this model to uh, to the sensor itself, so that the sensor can work in a in a very disconnected scenario. Oh, even wow. if we don't we don't have any connection, uh, but from time to time the sensor. So once you do uh, once you do uh, an action like a dribble, for example, the sensor would send that information to uh, to um, an external device, uh, which in this case could be any mobile device, mm -hmm. right? With the app installed on it, and then uh, that information can be projected to uh, a large screen where the coach and the team can actually see that. Oh, what kind of information do they see? Yeah, so um, we'll have, during the camp, we'll have uh, kids split into two teams. So it's going to be team A and team B. And uh, uh, each team can have, um, you know, from, let's say, I don't know, two to, to ten kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, when the kids start, uh, when the kids start uh, the drill, such as, for example, uh, a dribble, uh, we start um, transmitting that data into the app. The app calculates uh, uh, sort of measurements of uh, how well they perform mm. uh, and display that information so the kids can uh, real-time see uh, which team is winning. 
and that's basically the uh, gamification of that experience. Oh, fun! And that's they're, they're displaying that on this mobile device. This right. Here. Can we get a look at that? Sure. Yeah. So that's. Uh, and we're also projecting this up behind us as well. So, what uh, do these numbers mean? So the numbers mean uh, the number of dribbles that each team uh, performed at this point. Oh. And the lower charge shows the, uh, the time so that they can see real time what is happening uh, with each team's performance. Okay. Tell me a little about the technologies that you use to build the solution. Yeah, this is the best part, actually, David. As, as, as you know, and you, you were sitting just next to me, right? Yes. Uh, it was it was very entertaining to to watch this thing evolving uh, from the very beginning. You actually wrote the API that uh, sort of connected the uh, device to uh, to to the uh, external web server. So uh, basically, the um, before we started uh, with this experiment, we uh, recorded uh, raw data from uh, these sensors at a very, very high frequency, at about 100 hertz, mm. 100 samples per second. And um, uh, we used that data uh, from our own you know, dribbles to, uh, to, to see how we can understand what the dribble actually is. How can we uh, identify a dribble in the stream of data coming from the sensors? Mm. So that was the first the pr uh, fir first shot at it. Then we converted this model to a very efficient C code, which was deployed to the actual firmware on the device. Oh. Right? And then uh, we have uh, a thing called the Sensor Kit SDK, which is an open source SDK that anyone can take, uh, mm. can take a look at. We even had uh, an article recently uh, uh, published in uh, MSDN uh, magazine in April of this year, uh, 2018, uh, which is uh, describing how to use the Sensor Kit SDK uh, okay. to get the data from the device and then push it to uh, out there for the app use. This is an article that you wrote or the one that you read? So this is the, uh, the library that that me and uh, uh, a bunch of other people actually uh, collaborated. Uh, oh, outstanding. It's an open source project. It is an open source project, completely. Everything is open source. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's, uh, and we're collaborating, we're, we're, you're, that's controlling the device. We have a web service that's tracking information uh, about what the number of dribbles and passes and yep. so on. And then we also have some machine learning that you're doing. What, what tools did you use for the machine learning? Yeah, we used, uh, we used uh, R and uh, Machine Learning Studio. Okay. So essentially, those are the tools uh, primarily used for uh, data analysis. And uh, once, of course, the, uh, the model was designed, then we, we started optimizing that model to uh, support this to uh, uh, sort of firmware on the devices because obviously, you know, as you know, uh, in, in, uh, in sports, the environment uh, sometimes may be disconnected. You may not be Absolutely. always connected to the call. So not just in sports, happen. but yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Excellent. What's the next step? Now, we're, we're wrapping up. This is the last day of the sync week. Right. We're getting everything checked in, and, uh, and then we're going to hand it off to the storm. What's the next step? Well, David, I, I think that uh, with basketball, uh, we we really just started. So we started with very simple uh, yep. drills. Uh, so the next thing would be uh, looking at um, how we can analyze uh, rotations uh, of, of, of the wrist, for example, how yep. we can incorporate that data. Uh, we can also uh, make this available to uh, to multiple sensors and devices so that our mm. partners can actually uh, take advantage of that and uh, uh, literally in, increase the number of activities that they have on um, sensor devices supported uh, today because there are not clearly many devices in the world today that that you know are interested in basketball uh, yeah. so we're trying to sort of help our partners to uh, to move to new sports to uh, to leverage the code that we, we develop open source well absolutely you can see envision doing something very similar to analyze a baseball swing or a golf swing or absolutely a ball, absolutely uh, um you know David um, are the same I told you I'm, I'm, I'm a skier so the uh, the initial uh, sort of uh, push for this project was coming from uh, snow sports mm. uh, but again as, as you can see uh, the sports uh, the the sports that we can track uh, are not just limited to obviously you know one or two sports. Uh, there are many many activities where we can use them uh, use, use this uh, type of technology. Excellent. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Um, I think we we're pretty good. I okay. Think we're pretty good. Uh, do you have an online presence that you want to tell our viewers about? Uh, yeah, they can go to my Twitter. I sometimes post things there. Uh, what's, uh, the, what's your handle? It's uh, K Ashley Twit. Uh, okay, we'll put that right here, and I'll, I'll start following you. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, David. Kevin, thanks so much. Thank you. <coughs>
always always connected and uh, we uh, in this um, in this show, we, we wanted to show you the best uh, the best of what we can get today with uh, uh, by combining technology and sports uh, sensors and uh, uh, the best the best we know about human movement uh, with machine learning and AI.